Yo everybody, what's good? Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be talking about my Hardline bike, the bike that I use for Red Bull Hardline. Formerly my Enduro bike, but we transformed it into a bit of a one of a kind rig. So that's what we're talking about today. The setup's pretty unique and I have had a lot of questions about it. So we're gonna try and answer some of those today. We're gonna to talk a little bit about the setup and what the differences are to my Enduro bike and how I was able to tune my bike and how I set it up for such a gnarly event that is a world of difference to any enduro race that you can possibly do. So, um, yeah, like I said, took a while for the build to come together, but we got it and made it happen. Yeah, I have a race this coming weekend, but I think I'm gonna put the smaller uh, single crown forks back on. The build's super unique, like I said, and I did a lot of things that were different setup wise to how I usually run my enduro bike setup. So, talk a bit about that. But before we get stuck into the video, make sure you give it a like if you've not already. Comment below any questions that you have throughout the video that I may have missed, and I'll get back to you. And yeah, let's get stuck into the video and talk about this unreal one of a kind bike. So the plan this morning is to chat about my Norco range, like I said. Um, this was a super last minute deal as far as getting the build ready before Red Bull Hardline. So my first thing that was on my mind was change the drivetrain. So obviously running a 12 speed probably isn't the best idea, a long cage mech. There was a lot of features on the track that you could catch that stuff on potentially. And uh, so the first thing I wanted to change was the drivetrain and then of course the suspension as well for the front. So those were priorities for me and there are a couple other things on the bike that are changed and different but we'll go through that at some point. Um, but yeah, let's dig into the details of the bike. So here it is, Norco range. You see all the details are here. So this is a size large, 29 inch wheels, travel front 170 normally, travel rear 170 normally. And the geometry is here, reach 480, rear center 442.5, head tube angle 63.25, seat tube angle 77. So those are with the enduro forks up front and my normal enduro setup, but that's changed now. So we'll start with the rear. I was going on about running 12 speed. We have a seven speed here. We have the seven speed tram cassette. We have an 11 speed chain, which actually works, which I didn't know with seven speed. Then we have the TRP D87, which is super short cage mech. And honestly, the setup works perfect. We've got the shifter up front. And it just all ties in really well. So my main thinking behind this was short cage mech, more clearance and better range of gears so that I wasn't spinning uh, out of gears and running out of gears basically on the high speed track that we had. So yeah, nice setup, definitely clean. And I'm really stoked on that. So thanks to TRP for that. Next, we may as well talk about these bad boys. So these are the Onyx uh, DCD1s and full 200 mil of travel. They have all the bells and whistles. We have the rebound. Uh, we have OTT on the other side. And then we have these little pressure things at the back for letting some air out. And of course, the triple clamp setup. So very unique looking on this bike, obviously being an enduro bike. But I think it ties up really well and I honestly made minimal changes to these. I put in quite a bit of air in the front from what I remember 125. I left my low speed at 2. Um, I honestly really didn't mess too much with it. If anything, I messed with my rebound the most. I didn't want to get kicked and obviously I didn't want to have my suspension too slow for the jumps. So I played with the rebound a bit and that's the only changes I really made setup wise to these forks. Regarding the shock here, I've got the Jade X, fits in perfectly, 500 spring here. And yeah, like I said again, rebound are the only real changes that you can really make on the shock. You can change the spring and then we have open, mid and firm settings here. So uh, firm's really good for climbing, but of course, pretty much just choose to leave it open. Regarding the wheels, I wanted a tougher set of wheels, uh, just a little, a little bit more durable, even though my uh, Union have been absolutely amazing. These are the We Are One Composites Strife, so tougher carbon. I think they're built a little bit stiffer, and I asked for this custom build with the gold nipples and 
the gold i9 hydro hubs which i mean they're probably the nicest set of wheels i've ever had um they just look really really bling so yeah i really enjoyed these these are carbon of course and i've not had a single problem with them a lot of people were kind of breaking wheels at the weekend and these were perfect regarding tires and inserts i went for asagai downhill casing front and rear and inside we actually have the XC Kushkor. Regarding the inserts, the Kushkor cross country was something that I've always wanted to try and I felt that it would be the perfect event to try them out at. Obviously they're a little bit lighter than the Pro Set, but I felt like they did the same job. Regarding tire pressures and stuff, I ran much harder tire pressures than normal. Um, to be exact, it was about 28, 29 in the rear and 25, 26 in the front. Usually I'm under 20 with the pro set so quite a difference um but i felt like i didn't want any tire the tire to roll or fold on the takeoffs because we were hitting the takeoff so fast and they were so steep that i felt like you got a tire squirm on it wouldn't be good i did see it a couple times happen so yeah just bumped the pressures up and the kush core felt like it did its job and i really recommend the cross country set for enduro my whole thinking behind it was to run a kush core cross country in the front and a pro set in the back because um, I think the pro set is a little bit too much for enduro you're carrying quite a lot of weight so that was my thinking behind it and it went down a treat so I'm stoked with that regarding everything else on the bike was pretty much left as normal we have the TRP DHR Evos front and rear of course I ran 223 rotor in the front for more stopping power and just a normal 203 on the rear and inside front and rear are metal pads of course cockpit setup wise um did have to run a direct mount stem unfortunately pnw don't do that but i don't expect them to do that so ran that stem directly bolt straight onto here of course had to keep something pnw on the build the dropper post which i think is pretty funny there we go i mean how ridiculous does that look <laughs> and i had to pop it at the top on my run at Hardline, just to show it off. So shout out to Riley and the whole crew there. I think they were really stoked on that and I was just stoked I was able to kind of keep something on the bike. There was PW that I could bring to that race and show it off. I mean, you look at it like this, it's definitely a very unique build now. Looking build for sure. <laughs> Regarding setup wise for the bike, everything, the changes that I made as far as drivetrain and suspension were very, they were the things I was changing, of course. Um, Setup wise, I was running stiffer suspension, so more air pressure and harder spring, tougher tire pressures, like more air in the tire. As far as my levers too, I wound my levers further out so that the bite point was much sooner as well. It was a tough race. I felt like my, I got quite a lot of arm pump at that race because you're gripping on so much tighter for all the gnarly features and the parts in between that tires you out. Um, but all in all, as far as the performance of the bike, I was blown away with it. I think so many people were impressed and just that, that I was able to convert that bike in such little time and I was able to do what I did on it. Um, I really exceeded my own goals and expectations. I would have been cool if I'd went there, taken part, done a couple jumps and I went home, honestly. Um, and to be able to do what I did, I was <clears throat> really proud and stoked of all the brands that support me that came together and helped out. And uh, I think we got one of the best looking bikes, 100% one of the best looking bikes at that event. So really proud of it, stoked of it. And yeah, the Norco range killed it. Um, enduro bike slash able to do downhill stuff kind of bike. It's, it's really crazy. Regarding how it rode though as well, um, I'm not too sure if the geometry was like slightly different, messed up. I've not done any measurements. Um, it felt pretty natural when I was on it, although it didn't. It doesn't feel as slack as maybe what a downhill bike would. I still had that element of enduro feel on it, like it wasn't super slack. Still felt like how my range with the single crown fork rides just a little bit more travel on the front. Some characteristics were very different, but some were very same, uh, or very much the same. Yeah, quite a, quite an experience riding that bike um, at that event. Uh, definitely 100% in for it next year. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a little bit more of an insight into my Red Bull Hardline race bike, which is now being converted back to an enduro bike. I'm taking it into the bike shop in Innerleithen to get the single crowns put back on. I'm racing this weekend at the British Downhill Series at Innerleithen. So I feel a lot better uh, just having that kind of like week to really do nothing and to let my coccyx rest um, has made that a little bit of a difference and I'm kind of busy at the moment I don't want to take any more sort of time off and I have stuff to do so we're going racing um, yeah enduro bike on, on downhill tracks again at a downhill race so that'll be a really fun concept um, hopefully try and bring videos from that depending on the GoPro situation you know how it is with British cycling so fingers crossed we get that sorted but yeah any questions that I missed or like any parts of the bike that I missed let me know if you have any questions regarding setup let me know and I'll get back to you but thanks for tuning in super cool concept and very cool bike to chat about so I'm stoked that I could uh, give you more insight into it but yeah make sure you give the video a like and if you aren't subscribed already please do and we'll catch you in the next video peace out